Investigative journalism website Sarawak Report has cast doubt on former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak's assertions of innocence in the One Malaysia Development Burhad scandal. Najib, who is currently serving a prison sentence, apologized on 25 October for his role in the scandal, but reiterated his stance that he was unaware of the financial misconduct allegedly orchestrated by fugitive financier Joe Lowe. In a recent statement, Sarawak Report criticized Najib's claim, contending that, for those who have followed the facts, the impossibility of Najib's claim that he was an innocent who was tricked by Joe Lowe and knew nothing of his thefts is plain to see. This assertion comes as Najib's apology has drawn scrutiny, particularly regarding his insistence that he was uninformed about misappropriated funds. The one to be fund which Najib co-founded in 2009 during his tenure as both Prime Minister and Finance Minister, has become one of the largest corruption cases in recent years. Authorities in at least six countries have investigated the fund, tracing the alleged embezzlement of over US $4.5 billion by high-ranking officials and their associates. The scandal has implicated several prominent figures, including Lowe and two executives from Saudi oil company Petra Saudi, who are believed to have colluded in diverting millions from 1MDB. Both Lowe and the Petra Saudi executives, who were convicted in a Swiss court in August 2024 for embezzling funds from 1MDB, have denied wrongdoing. In 2022, Malaysia's highest court upheld Najib's conviction on charges of corruption and money laundering related to SRC International, a former 1MDB subsidiary, sentencing him to 12 years in prison. While the original sentence was later reduced through a royal pardon, Najib, 71, has continuously denied any involvement in illegal activities. He maintains that the funds he received were political donations from Saudi Arabia, a claim many have disputed as authorities have linked these funds to 1MDB transactions, including a substantial transfer of your $681 million in 2013. Najib's apology also followed Malaysia's recent government proposal to introduce house arrest as an alternative sentencing option in certain cases, starting in 2025. Najib has advocated for serving the remainder of his sentence under house arrest citing a royal order that purportedly accompanied his pardon. He has sought clarification from the government regarding the specifics of this order. At a press conference on 25 October, Najib's son, Mohammed Nizar Madnejib, read a letter from the former prime minister in which he expressed regret over the scandal. Najib stated, It pains me every day to know that the 1MDB debacle happened under my watch as Minister of Finance and Prime Minister. However, he stopped short of admitting to direct involvement, instead acknowledging that he could have acted differently when concerns about 1MDB first surfaced. Najib further claimed in his letter, later shared on his official Facebook page, that he prioritized the fund's stability and diplomatic relations over investigating criminal activities. Malaysian anti-corruption investigators have since revealed that attempts to investigate 1MDB under Najib's administration were obstructed, with witnesses reportedly facing intimidation and death threats to prevent cooperation. In its critique, Sarawak Report questioned Najib's reluctance to reveal Joe Lowe's role within 1MDB. The site argued that Najib's insistence on secrecy regarding Lowe's involvement indicated deeper knowledge of the financier's actions. According to Sarawak report, Najib refrained from publicly acknowledging Lowe's influence within the fund, even as Lowe acted as a shadow proxy, coordinating with 1MDB's board and other parties through clandestine channels. The investigative site further noted that 1MDB's former CEO, Cheryl Holmey, testified to Lowe's exclusive communications practices which involved coded messages and secret instructions purportedly endorsed by Najib. Sarawak report asserted that if Najib were indeed unaware of these dealings, he would likely have confronted Halmi upon discovering significant fund transactions and high-profile partnerships.